and wrap up with some quick review questions and then we'll move on to actual embedding. So, true or false, a document structure is defined as a mongoose schema. True. One. Yes, true. Perfect. Yes. The d shape of our data is going to conform to whatever we define here in our schema. All right. Name at least two model methods that are used to read data from a MongoDB collection. Find. Perfect. Love it. Create and create. Cool. Right? Specifically for this, let's be a little like specifically reading, getting data from our database. Find by index. Find by not ID. index, but ID. I ID. think I heard you say yes. ID. Perfect. All right. Uh, and can a single model be used to query more than one MongoDB collection? We haven't necessarily talked about this, but if you could intuit it, potentially. I had to guess I'd say one model per collection. Correct, yes, that is right. So our collection that we have here is again, showing up in our database as movies. So this model over here refers to this movies collection. All right, so. That's, that's the idea that we will be creating several different databases and they'll all just have their separate title. Correct. Or... We'll have different databases in here and each in each one of those databases will have more than one collection. And that's actually what we're going to talk about in the next lecture. Got it. Perfect. All right. So speaking of the next lecture, let's go ahead and move on to that. Uh, we are going to continue working in the same movies project. Uh, but we are going to be using a new lecture material. So in here, we're going to talk about embedding. Uh, we're going to uh, be able to start off this lecture uh, using partial views. So if you've been holding out for those, you're going to be so happy whenever we learn about those this time around. You're going to be able to define schemas for embedding sub-documents and then also embed a sub-document inside of its related document. We'll talk about how that works. We're also going to be touching on uh, updating and deletion as well whenever we uh, go into this lecture. So we are going to start, though, with partial views. So uh, what I would like everyone to do is run this fun block of code in your terminal. I will send this over to you in Slack as well. There you go. So we're just going to run all of this over here. Uh, we're just making a directory for all of our partial views. And then we're making a few EJS files inside of those. So what we're going to do in here is in this partials directory, we're going to swing into our HTML head first. So what you're going to see in here is that these partials are going to be able to be used to kind of uh, keep us from having to repeat a bunch of code in our EJS files. So like right now, yeah, in this index.ejs, we have this head up here. And then in our new .ejs, we have the same thing up here. So partials are going to allow us to get around having to essentially write all of this same code over and over and over and over. Again, we want to stay dry. We don't want to repeat ourselves as we go through and build out our applications. Uh, so that is essentially what these are uh, setting us up to do. They're going to allow us to stray, stay dry. So in our HTML head, uh, I'm just going to copy this over. You'll notice in here that there's a script. 
And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, so this just goes to uh, fontawesome.com. Again, uh, we'll kind of talk about what this is going to be doing for us here in a second. And also notice that we are requiring a title here. What does having this title here mean that we're going to have to do? On any page where we use this uh, template, this partial template, what are we going to need to pass to that page? A title. A title, exactly. We're going to have to pass, for example, in our controllers over here, uh, whenever we want to uh, render something out, whenever we have a res.render, we're going to need to pass in here this object, title, and something. So we're going to need these for all of our uh, wherever we're going to be using this HTML head.ejs, wherever we use this template. Yes, Ryan. Um, just looking at the, um, the HTML we just, we just copied over, do we have to have a closing head tag? No, you will not. Okay. That is going to actually be the job of our next EJS file, which is going to be this one right here. This is where we're actually going to close out our head tag is in this nav.ejs file. Of course, I didn't copy it correctly. That's always fun. Slash head. Uh, I'll send these in Slack for you too. Just so you have them handy to access. So we have our HTML head first. Remember, this is our uh, Again, going to replace the majority of our boilerplate that we've got. And then we're adding in this nav bar and we're opening the body here too, you'll notice. So we're not only closing the head in this nav.ejs, we're also opening the body up. And then we're going to close the body in our footer.ejs. And that's going to be the job of this file. So we've composed all of these partials. And in a second, we're going to link them up together. And we're going to also talk about uh, what this uh, font I awesome icon is coming from. So that is this thing right here. We're going to dive into that here in a bit. Uh, Ollie, yes. You answered my question, thank you. Perfect. So let's go ahead and make use of this. I'm going to first throw this in our movies index EJS. So what I'm going to do, if I want to make use of this, I just need to follow this syntax right here. So I'm going to get rid of this entire head right here. in here, I'm going to write and include. You'll notice that this is a new type of EJS tag that we're using here. So this is called an escaped output. Let's look at that real quick. Uh, bah, 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 documents, tags. So this says it outputs the unescaped value into the template. So what we're going to be doing is actually making this call right here, this include call uh, whenever we are working with our uh, EJS. Uh, let me see if there is, nope, okay, cool. So what this is going to do Whenever we have this include, this is just going to go and print out everything that is in this file to this file. That's what this is. That's what this minus is essentially saying here, or our little like single tentacle thing. It's a squid giving you the finger. 
I was going to say it's a squid crying. Just a single uh, tear. Oh, okay. A squid frying because it's on a stick. Or it's Squidward, then that's his nose. Oh, I like that. I also like fried squid. Squid kebab case. I I like the squid kebab. That makes me happy. Kebabs seem like a fun thing. Or it could be Squidward kebabed. Ah, there you go. <laughs> that would make me happier, actually. So what we're going to do <laughs> is include this HTML file that we just created, or this EJS file that we just created, this uh, HTML head. So essentially what this is going to do, whenever we have this, going to do, oh, hello, partials. Uh, you'll notice here that you don't get auto completion and it makes me really, really sad. But we could just work around that. We don't have to type this out that often, thankfully. So you'll pretty much just copy and paste this over and over and over into all of your uh, actual files. And then I'm also going to include our partial for our dev. And then we'll move from there, partials slash nav. And then to finish this off, uh, because I don't have an opening and closing uh, body or HTML in here, what I would like to do is instead include our footer. So now this is where our footer is going to go. Include slash partials footer. All right, so what is actually going on here? Well, what we're printing out here is essentially going to be exactly what we had in these files. So I'm just going to move this over. What we're going to get, what this include partials HTML head is doing is it's bringing the contents of that file onto this page it's going to look exactly like this whenever this is rendered over to our user. This is what they're going to see. Same thing over here with our nav. So we're going to bring in this nav and this is what the user is going to see rendered out to them. Partials are super, super, super cool. Whoa, what? I'll take it. That's fine. This is only staying around here for a second. So this is, ah, I see what's going on. Got to close this squid. There we go. Okay, cool. So you'll see in here, this is what our user is going to see. And just by doing this include blah, 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 partials slash HTML head, I get all of this in this document. And by including this partial, I get all of this in this document. So now I can use both of these over and over and over and over again. And I will have a consistent nav across any page that I create. And I'll be using what's in this head across any page that I have. Because we're splitting these up also, we'll be able to bring in anything specific to this EJS file between these two lines. I'm going to get rid of these because I think you all grasp that by now. So anything that we want to include in the head, remember our closing header tag doesn't happen until the nav partial gets brought in. So anything that I want that is specific to this EJS page, I can bring that in right here. So if I want to have a style sheet for my movies index file and only my movies index file, I can bring that in right here. I can make a link to a CSS style sheet. And this is just going to be in style sheet slash movies slash index.css.
And remember, this is possible because in my HTML head, I'm opening this head tag and not closing it. So over here, I still can write things in the HTML head right here. And then we're closing the head in our nav.ejs right here on this line. Any questions about how these are working, why this works, anything like that? We all kind of following. Perfect. Okay, cool. So you'll see in here that this really, really cleans up and shortens our H or uh, EJS quite a bit. Uh, this is all inside of a main tag, so I'm going to throw that in here. Uh, close it with that as well. And then we should swap this out for a title. So remember, even if I didn't have this title, actually, let me revert this change real quick. You can keep it on your end though. But remember in our HTML head, we have this title. So anywhere where we're using this HTML head .ejs, anywhere where we're importing it as a template, that means that we need to pass title to this view. If I go and I load this right now, what we're going to see, if I go to local 3000 slash movies, we're going to see title is not defined. You don't see title anywhere on this page, right? There is no uh, printing of title. There's no, we're not using title in any of our squid, right? but it's still included in this HTML head. So it's coming from right here. So we need to make sure that we're passing title to this page. So we can do that back in our controller. So on our index page, I'm going to pass title as, uh, what did we want to pass the title as? Let's see. It does actually matter what we call this. We are making reference to it in our nav bar. So we do need to pass the exact title in the exact case that we have it here. This is going to be all movies. We also need to do that on our new movie function as well, because that is where we've got this new EJS and we're going to swap this out too here in a second. So this, we're going to need to add a render for add movie. Let's do that. Back in our controller, since we're messing with this right now in our new movie one, I want to pass a title and its value is going to be add movie. And let's go ahead and actually fix up this new.ejs file as well. So it needs to look like, oh, what are two mains there? That's not good. So it needs to look like this. I'm going to write out this includes. And does anyone have any questions while we go and write this out? Cool, cool. And like I said, most of the time you'll end up just copying and pasting this from one page to the next, because we want to have this nav on every page. We want to have this HTML head on every page. It just makes sense for us to, instead of writing it over and over, 
introducing possible errors in our writing, it's a lot easier to just say, hey, we're going to copy this from the last page. Uh, this does need to be style sheets slash movies slash new.css. And I'm going to throw this inside of a main tag as well. And of course, don't forget your footer. All right. So this is our new new.ejs. This is our new index page. I'll go ahead and send both of these out to you in Slack. index.ejs and then this. It's going to be new.ejs. All right. Yes, Tay. Can I see your um movies.js in the controller again. I think I messed something up in the new movie title part. Yep. Just needs to look like that. Uh, let's see, where did I? Aha, I have a parenthesis in the wrong place, I think. So this should go at the, you should have an opening one at the right after render and then closing one right after you end your object. Gotcha. Yeah, I had the, I was doing the same thing where I popped it on the end of the movie's new in the wrong spot. Nice. Thank you. Cool. Totally. All right. We're also going to update our actual main index.ejs as well. So this is the one outside of movies. Cool. So here, make sure that you are swapping out uh, your actual um, path for this, though. So again, I'm just going to copy this over from our uh, index.ejs, our movies index.ejs, back into our main index.ejs file. But we are not leaving a directory this time to get into the partials directory. So whenever we have index and new, we had to leave the movies directory to be able to get into partials. We're already in our main views directory here, so we just need to enter partials. So instead of dot dot slash partials, this is just going to be dot slash partials. Uh, we're not going to link this style sheet or any style sheet at all. I'm also going to include the footer here as well. And some main tags for this. All right. Before we move on from this, does anyone have any questions about any of these partials? Why we're we using them, how we're we using them, what they're going to do for us, anything like that? Uh, can you just do a push when I copied uh, one of your pages, the add a movie broke somehow. <laughs> cool. I would love to. Uh, Tay, was your question still good? Or you... Okay, cool. Emma. Yeah, I mean, I understand what we're doing right now, but I just wonder why we're doing it. Cool. Yeah, totally. So the partials 
are going to allow us to essentially be able to not have to write this HTML over and over and over again. So we have this nav, right? And now if we go back to our actual project, we can look at this. This nav is going to appear on any page that we include this nav partial in. So we don't have to go and write this code over and over and over and over again, right? We All we have to do is throw in this line right here. Also, say we want to take something out of this nav or add something to this nav later. All we have to do is make an update to nav.ejs, and it's going to be reflected across every single uh, EJS page where we're including this nav bar in. We aren't going to have to write this code over and over and over anymore. All this is going to do is require us to import or include this uh, nav partial in here. So we get that code for practically free every single time we make a new file from this point forward. David, you misspelled upstream, so you didn't actually push. Thank you. I am not pushed. There you go. That is your question, Emma. Perfect. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? All right. So you'll notice that if we come back to our page, you're going to see, oh, this looks really, really different now. Uh, that's because we're actually making use of our uh, different uh, our different CSS files in this project now. So uh, most of the things in here you have seen before. Uh, so hopefully that is uh, pretty kind of explanatory for you. Uh, the only real new things in here might be something like our uh, in the child, but this is just saying, hey, if I have a list uh, and it has an item with an ID of list, and then if I have table data inside of that, then I want my second child and my third child in here to have a minimum width of 100 pixels. All right, so. Uh, moving on from here, let's see what else we can talk about. Um, so yes, we are going to be using uh, these actual CSS files. We've moved away from our style.css and we're now using main.css as well in our HTML head. And you can see that right here. You can see that like, hey, if I decide I want to use a different style sheet at any point in time, we can kind of see where this modularity is going to come into handy. So if I wanted to switch this out for any reason at all, I could do that from in here. And then, boom, here we go. Now I'm back on my old style sheet. And this is going to be reflected across every single page that I'm using this HTML head in. So if I go into add movie, I'm going to be using that new style sheet over here as well. So it's real simple with our partials to be able to make big sweeping changes across our entire site really, really quickly. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I do need to be making use of, let's see, in our new.ejs. I think I might have missed. Oh, no, we're good. Okay, cool. All right. So uh, that is this little bit all taken care of. You'll notice in our nav bar, we're doing a couple cool things. So we have in our, in our uh, main.css, one of the things that we have in here is a class of active. And in this nav bar, 
on our class of uh, active, we're setting this whenever the title is going to be either all movies or add movie. So if our title is equal to all movies, like it is over in our browser right now, we have the class name of active being applied to this anchor tag. If we don't have a title equal to that, then we're not going to have anything at all. No class, no active. And this active class, as you can see, changes the color of uh, the text in it to white, which we can see here. When our title is all movies, as it is right now, we are able to see that, hey, this is white text. I can go to add movie and we'll see this change as well. I can be on this add movie page. And here we go. Now this up here is white because our title is add movie. We also have something else inside of our nav bar as well. And this is this font awesome icon. So let's talk a little bit about font awesome. Uh, so Font Awesome is a cool uh, free project that has uh, pro features uh, locked behind a paywall uh, where we have access to a bunch of free icons. And Font Awesome is really, really simple to use. Uh, as you all saw, you just brought in a uh, da, 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 in your uh, nav partial or rather, sorry, in your HTML head, all you needed to do is bring in the script right here. Uh, so whenever you sign up for Font Awesome, you actually get access to a kit. Uh, this is tied to kind of your account, essentially. You're all using my account currently, but I encourage you to come in here and sign up for an account yourself. It is free, like I said, uh, at least for quite a few of these icons. Uh, but all we do is import the script, and then all we need to do from that point forward is use these classes to be able to access specific icons. So let's go check this out. Um, let's search for film, since that's what we have here. This is our icon. I can click in here, and we can see that if I want to use this, once I have my kit, all I need is this FAS and then FA-Film class. So FAS stands for Font Awesome Solid, and then we have this FA-Film icon here. Uh, so they have lots of these as well, uh, locked behind their uh, pro tier. But uh, yeah, they do offer us this just solid version for free. Uh, so you can see in here, we are using this FA2X. Uh, what that is, is this FA2X uh, right here. We're using this size instead of the default size, but you have the ability to, of course, increase the size uh, as they have here. Uh, they have lots of different implementations of this, so you can see what this is going to look like uh, whenever you actually implement it in your site. Uh, and like I said, just make sure that as you're working in here, you're going into this free uh, version as well. You want to make sure you're not selecting pro icons because you're not paying for this. So uh, yeah, that is Font Awesome. Uh, anyone have any questions about this? Your credit card attached to your account? It's not. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if only, right? Um, okay, so that is this kind of initial setup done. Uh, we are going to next swing into, uh, let's see, we're going to work on show, we're going to work on delete and update, and then we're going to talk about actually embedding data. Uh, that's going to be kind of the back half of this lecture. So uh, let's go ahead and take a break for 10 minutes. I'll see you at the top of the hour.